Ian, mm -hmm. I've been following this project for a good year and a half for I, this Kickstarter. I've been aware of it for about a year, I think. At least by name. I, I, I've known of the idea, but as NES Maker, it's been about a year. Yes, Ian, NES Maker is the Kickstarter. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so this is from uh, someone I know. I've seen him at many conventions. He's a very nice guy, Joe Granado. So going back a few years, there was a original Kickstarter called the New 8-Bit Heroes. It was both a documentary about the homebrew NES scene mm -hmm. and also uh, recording or documenting Joe and his pals making their own NES homebrew called, uh, what is Mystic it? Searcher. Mystic Searches, which is a, a little cute little adventure game. You know, so that documentary eventually came out. It came out, I believe, fall of this past 2017. I appear in it. I shot it. I shot my interview for it in uh, 2000, I think 2015. So it's been a while. It's been a long journey. You were younger and handsomer. Yes. This move did take a lot out of me some years. <laughs> so, and check it out. It's on Amazon Prime. I think it's on, uh, you, you, I think you can rent it. You, you have Civac Creator Battle Kid, one of the first yeah. modern uh, NES homebrews. I'm in there. My pal, Norm the Gaming Historian, also appears in that. Uh, Dane Anderson from Nintendo Age and others. So, from that project, though, Joe and the team developed a tool to more easily make NES games. Because in the past, in order to make an NES game, you had to know assembly. Hex and assembly. So that's not the. It's not exactly ex accessible uh, to most out there. So this Kickstarter NES Maker is, to me, revolutionary in a way. And I've been excited and waiting for this for about a year and a half, if not two years, for this Kickstarter to come out. Yeah, it should be pretty, pretty goddamn kick-ass. Because I've used it. I used it, like, over a year ago. I think a year and a half ago I first used it. And I was like, Joe, this has to come out. This will open up NES game development to everyone. This is bigger than your homebrew game, which he realized. And this is going to be bigger than maybe your documentary. And he was like, yeah, you're, you're probably right. Uh, so... This is a software tool, a GUI, if you will, in order to make your own NES games. It's an engine, yeah, but more importantly, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it is a GUI. It's a graphical user interface. They've, they've, they're basically, they created an easier way for themselves to make their game, and now they are marketing that. Yeah. Um, but in addition to that. So that's what they call the adventure game module, which is similar to, say, Zelda. So that was a $32,000 goal. By the time we recorded this on January 16th, they blew past their goal. They have unlocked the adventure game module, the platformer module, the RPG module, and, uh, uh, yep, that's it. The brawler and the shooter module are still the go, but at this rate, I don't think they're going to have any problem hitting it. They're going to kill it. And what's great about these is that that doesn't sound as it can be as cookie cutter as you want or as non cookie cutter as you want. You can play by the rules of the templates that they're making and simply drop in your own sprites and music and stuff like that. Or you can mash templates together. Basically what they're giving you is a set of coding guidelines that you can hear, uh, you know, drag and drop graphical user interface guidelines that you can adhere to. Or you can script your own stuff. You can mix them together. They even talk about that a little bit in yeah. the Kickstarter. So, the I mean, the main reason I'm saying this is just as a as a just to let people know. Even if they don't, and they will, but even if they didn't hit the goal and get those shooter modules released and those brawler modules released, someone's gonna do them later. Or someone could figure out eventually. Yeah, that, well, the that's community what I'm saying. Can, Some, can put it someone can put that yeah. stuff together later. This is going to be a very nice, easy to use program to make your own NES games as basic or as expansive as you want with the right amount of guidance up front to just get something going and playable. Yeah, and I've I've used it. Right. I've used it, and within, I'd say, within 10 minutes, we had, like, an overworld uh, Adventure of Zelda, excuse me, Adventure, Legend of Zelda-style screen with was a it, couple of monsters and a little hero, and we were, we were fighting it out. Were the yeah. monsters um, bad nachos, and was the hero good nachos? I don't know what that's a reference to, Ian. Your love of fucking nachos, Patrick. Oh. No, Ian, it was not. 
Well, but we should make that game. We should make the adventure of, of Pat and versus the Nachos. Yes, we should do that. Someone's gonna probably do that now with 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 NES Maker. So, what, what's cool about it is yes, there is like a from what I remember, uh, there's there's a library of assets you could choose from to drop into your game. But then you can yeah, you can make your own. But I remember the engine will tell you if that graphic assets good or not well, that, See, it'll work. that thing i think is awesome that i yeah. think that's the most important i think honestly the basic skeleton of what they're adding of what they have is the most important the thing that makes sure that um you're within your color palette right yeah, yeah. range and not and, too many and your colors right range yeah. and you know you're, you're staying within that so that it's instantly flashable I think those overall guidelines are honestly the greatest thing that this is is offering. And then, you know, the um, the extra bit of, you know, drag and drop that's afforded by the modules is even better. Yeah, and so with the like for example, what when he told me he told me about way back about the different what they could what you can create with these five different types of games. And I told him at the time like that's going to be cool cuz that's going to cover like 85 to 90% of all the games. NES type of games you can possibly make. When you really think about it, and again, and this is just with the tool set built in without exploring. It without exploring, yeah. yeah. So, adventure, platformer, that includes action platformers, um, RPGs, brawlers, uh, and shooters. So, when you, when you think about it, you only have sports games that are left, and those are very specific type of games, uh, and puzzle games, and maybe those great old Koei games you love, like, like strategy type of games. But and the, you could still... Probably, I mean, you can probably still figure it out. It would take a lot of work to do it, nuts and bolts versus having the engines ready to go for you. The whole point is this: is that this is going to satisfy the needs of most of the type of games you want to make. Sure. Even said that you can make it your own Metroidvania type of game if you do a little tinkering behind the scenes. Right. Do. That's what I was talking about before. If you take the the uh, adventure module and you take the uh, platformer module. You know, you've got that stuff already kind of pre-existing in there to do what you want to do. It, it, it even says that in the Kickstarter, you know, by mixing the two. So yeah. basically, you know, you can load any one of these up and I, what I'm assuming is have everything ready to go for drag, drop, and create. Yeah. Or if you want to do a little bit of scripting or coding or just pulling from various libraries, you can do much, much this, more. This is why this is important to me before I get into the specific uh, tiers. This is important because for so many years, the homebrew scene has been locked away and you, it, unless you knew how to do the coding, you couldn't make the game. So that a very specific type of person was making these games. Very technical minded person that knew how to use assembly and put together the games. That doesn't necessarily mean the person had the greatest idea to do a game. But that was the type of person that could do it. You didn't have right. full teams putting together these homers. Usually a one person, you know, club doing it. Now you can have teams of people doing it. Right. You can say, like, you know what? I'm hanging out with Ian and, and Vonnie. All right, we know someone to do do the assets. Give me the assets, I'll drop it in. We can someone to do the sounds on your little synthesizer or whatever to get in. It's more collaborative. It's it's more accessible to everyone. And it's not locked away. There's no more gatekeepers now, right. potentially, to the homebrew community. Right. Now you can have someone that could have had it all worked out in their head and th said, I'll never be able to make this game. Now they got a shot to do it. Yeah. It's we'll extremely get, exciting. We'll get Vonnie to do the art assets. We'll get you really high because it's legal now. And you can just babble. We'll get Norm <laughs> in town and we'll get Norm to just kind of transcribe the gist of a story from your babbling. And I'll code it out. You're going to code it out? You're actually going to learn how to use the software again. I'm going to hold you to that. That's It shouldn't be hard. It's, it's basically like Windows 3.1. So that's what you got there. So this is so this is the tiers here. So the software is $36. The... The one that that's incredibly reasonable. Let me for tell software. You, sure. Let me tell you why. Because what I see this as is it's like okay for for PC game development there was a program back in the nineties called Click and Play that was huge. It was a drag and drop game creation system with a very easy horizontal vertical checklist of if thens that you okay. could make. Okay, and then that turned into uh, the Games Factory, which is actually still used today for some games. Um, I think Hotline Miami was actually made in it. Very easy graphical oh, really? user. Yeah, very easy graphical user interface. Maybe the Ian game with the rabbit was too. No, that was uh, that was uh, RPG Maker. Okay. Um, and then there are things like Unity, and they get progressively more 
intricate, but they're still easy for people to approach. This is kind of like the games factory for uh, NES. You know, anyone can get into this, and I see this being humongous. So, yeah, I I could do this not because I'm a, a coding whiz, but just because I have the basic knowledge of how something flows and you just look at it and it makes sense so this is cool though so the 36 dollar one is a software is, oh at, yeah, a, at 88 dollars you get the toolkit which is the software a casual usb cartridge uh cart flasher which i actually do own one somewhere i'll find in the move because i have to uh i have to uh download the roms of the two prototypes i have and get them out there but i do have a casual usb they're actually sold out in the website right now probably because they're supplying them for this kickstarter right. um but but it's not that expensive. But you also get a blank reflashable cartridge. So that's cool. Which is cool. So otherwise you can just load up an emulator and play it. But what if you want to just put it on the NES and get that feel? Right. Like that's that's just a cool thing that didn't exist before. And then that if you package. want to, you can start ordering the uh you know, the pieces and the boards and you can do a production run yourself by actually burning it to ROMs. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you can work that out as well. So then they have the the NES Maker Pro which gets you a flasher that's inside of a uh, NES style ho- housing, so that's a little. And there's fancier. one with a gold. And the gold one, because you have to have it with the gold. Because everyone housing. loves gold. <laughs> so, so I, I think I think we're I think we're thinking about the CU podcast game now. I think we can do that. I think we can put it together out there. But I, but just think about exponentially how many more NES homebrews you have. And people can say, oh, you're gonna have a lot of maybe shovelware out there, but, but you're gonna have yep. some awesome games. But you're also gonna have a lot of cool shit. You're gonna have some, some some the Ian Ferguson shooter. You're gonna make your own shooter, Ian. Now you can do it. Yeah, and a brawler, and a brawler. Yeah, the CU podcast brawler. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But no, but seriously though, I, I think this is this is fantastic. I'm. I told Joe, Joe, I told you this is gonna be a massive success. I said, Joe, this has to come out, and they launched it at uh, PAX. Uh, what was it PAX? Uh, which one? PAX South. And it, while they were there. I, I was talking to someone the other day about this, and this is a, a perfect example. Is Especially, I think, I don't want to say it's just for my age range, it's for everyone, but as I get older, I want more things that I can buy that give me a creative outlet mm-hmm. and less things that I consume, just to consume. And even if what I would do on this never made it to anyone, this is the sort of recreational hobby that I would find satisfying. And I think a lot of people are going to find it very satisfying, even if they just make it very small to put something on an NES cartridge and sure play it. You, hell, what if you just made your own little, I don't know, you made your own little like party game for someone, you know, like yeah. people are kids, people are coming over. You make your own little party shooter game or whatever, your own score attack thing, what, whatever. It's right. just, opens up a world that's cool now it sounds like we're shilling it, but no I, I, i'm, I'm really bored old. someday and i make a survival horror game where i have to avoid nene all over the house Th- there you go yeah <laughs> even, even if it's like even if it's like fucking pac-man and he's running around a maze it does, all right it does sound like shilling now but no i i do genuinely think this is a great idea and i actually did not know that um you knew the person involved with this so. you did not know that really yeah i didn't we're talking about this project for a year I you mean, don't remember those conversations. I've been following it, and I mean, I knew of it. Oh, God. All right. All right. Well, there you go. Check it out. I mean, I was aware of this. Well, Through me that. originally. You sure. heard from me first. But How do you think I knew about that does it? it? I don't know. I have an underground NES channel of information that I reach out to? Fucking hand jobs in a dark park at night? I, I have no idea, <laughs> those, Pat. Spare, those spare rumors about me and Joe. All right. All right. So check it out. It's already funded, so whatever we say, it's not going to fucking matter. We can't derail it. We can't make it that much better, but check it out and, and think it's a... Uh... Hand jobs. All right. <laughs>